ever since I remember. The Greeks and the Italians and the Mediterraneans were presented by the Northerners as corrupt. And we in the South also accepted that because there's no doubt that there's endemic corruption in the, in the South of the European Union. But it is low level, petty bourgeois corruption. It's cheap corruption. Whereas the North practices industrial scale, systematic, beautifully designed, high-tech corruption. I mean, how many examples do you want to give you? Siemens, 20 years ago, the FBI caught Siemens, having bribed hundreds, if not thousands, of politicians across Europe to adopt the Siemens electricity and tele telecommunication equipment. It was only when the Americans caught on that they revealed, the FBI revealed, all the data, including Greek politicians and Italian politicians and so on. Uh, you want me to mention Novartis? Exactly the same thing with Novartis. Do you want me to mention Volkswagen, Audi, Mercedes-Benz, with their diesel gate? I mean, think about it. This is corruption taken to a level of rocket science. They developed systems within their engines that detected when the engine exhaust is being monitored by some high-tech equipment of you know, national um, pollution management agencies use on those engines. So the engine would know when it was being monitored and suddenly, it changed the fuel mixture to be more environmentally friendly. You realize that that takes hundreds of enge skilled engineers designing a system that goes into diesel engines in order to cheat. I mean, you know, we in the Mediterranean, we don't have this technology. We, we're not that, that well advanced to be able to do it. Now, what about Deutsche Bank? <laughs> Deutsche Bank in 2008, 2009 was revealed that they had bet in the derivative markets of the United States a sum of dollars approximately 30 times the national income of Germany. They had become so bankrupt that they threatened to swallow the whole of the German, the Federal Republic. And what happened? Nothing. Merkel paid them, paid up. That's astronomical corruption. This is corruption that, you know, I mean, Kylie should be given a medal for ethics compared to Deutsche Bank. A medal for ethics. What's 600,000 euros? When you've got billions and billions and billions. You now, what they did here in Greece, the Greek banks have gotten bankrupt, okay? And what they did here was to come and make the German workers lend to the Greek state 50 billion euros, with which the Greek state was made, forced, to buy shares in those bankrupt Greek banks that didn't have a vote. So the Greek people had to vote for the German, from the German workers, 50 billion to buy shares that didn't give the Greek people who bought those shares a say in how to run those banks. And then the same banks were forced, forced, given the opportunity, to sell the loans of the little people that the little people could not repay because of all this disaster you know, austerity, bankruptcy, and so on. So little people could not pay their mortgages. So then the, those same banks, together with oligarchs from around the world in Delaware and Cayman Islands, created funds that purchased those loans from those banks for 3% of their nominal price, evicting those people from their homes, selling their homes, creating new deriv derivatives with the proceeds of those homes, and selling them to the same banks. Now, again, it takes extremely sophisticated financial engineers and lawyers who get paid huge quantities of money to indulge in what I just described, which is nothing short of the mother of all corruptions with taxpayers' money. Think of the Greek aerp airports again, 14 airports like Santorini and Mykonos, airports that cannot just not, not have huge profits because everybody who's got to Mykonos knows what I mean, right? They took these airports, they gave them to Fraport, a German company, for zero money on the basis of a loan that the Greek people were forced to give to Fraport. And during the pandemic, we gave them 180 million euros from money we borrowed from the European Central Bank 
to cover for not the costs of those airports, but for the profits they would have made if there was no COVID-19. And this, did the European Parliament agree that with that? No. Did were they asked? No. Were they told? No. But with, even if they were told, they were they would have already been paid off to turn a blind eye. Somebody in the chat said, "You say that there is no democracy, that you can't get rid of them." The European Union Council, well, it's made of elected heads of state and heads of government, and even Ursula von der Leyen and the the, the rest of the vegetables vegetating the, in the Commission, they've been appointed by elected governments. That's all correct. It's all correct, and it's also irrelevant. Because let me tell you this, I've been in the Eurogroup, I've been in the COFIN, I've been in the European Council. I'll tell you how it works. You go in there, 28, 29 people, representing different countries, you are democratically elected. The decision has already been made before you go in there of what you're going to decide. If you're really tough, like I try to be, you veto it. But then, of course, after six months, you're no longer a minister. So you keep your mouth shut because you don't want to lose that position. And in that council, no one agrees with the decision that's been made. No one, not a single person. Believe me, not a single person ever. If you speak to them individually, they say, ah, yeah, it was crap, what we decided. And then they come out, they come out and they give a, a statement to the press that they've all agreed on that. They don't even know what they agreed on, more or less. And they go home. The Italian goes to Rome. The Greek goes to Athens. The German goes, goes to Berlin. And there, they blame it all on the European Union Council to which they were a member. They say, what could, what could we do? I couldn't go against the grain, against Europe. I couldn't go against Europe. I had to agree. Nobody agrees with that, with what they agreed to. That's how the European Union works. That's why I called it a, a cartel. When I was a member of, a, of the Greek government, I could have been overthrown next day by the Greek parliament. I could have been overthrown by the Greek people in the next general election. The Greek people could withdraw the support to us. The Germans can dismiss the German. But the European Union Council that makes all these decisions cannot be dismissed by the Europeans. You realize that? So nobody takes responsibility for what it does. Nobody agrees with what it does. And they all blame it on Europe. So when something good happens as a result of the European Union Council, ah, everybody is uh, part of the glory. When something goes wrong, nobody takes responsibility. That's not a democracy. That is a bloody disaster whose only beneficiaries are the oligarchs and the Qataris and the Kailis and all those bloody parasites. That's what it is. So what is Diem proposing? From day one, February 2016, when we created Diem25, what we proposed was transparency everywhere. Let's live stream the bloody meetings of the council, every minister's gathering. I would say every time any MEP, I want perfect surveillance, exactly the opposite of what we are demanding from citizens. We want citizens to be protected from surveillance. We want full surveillance on officials. You get elected, you get surveyed. Every meeting you have is live streams. I know it sounds extreme. I'm exaggerating to make a point. All the important meetings, all the fora, like our parliaments, are being televised. Why isn't the European Union Council televised? Why isn't it a coffin? So this is the first thing we said. And then, of course, beyond that, all power to Europeans. Constitutional Assembly, have a parliament that actually works as a parliament. The things that are ne not never going to happen now. Because, folks, let's be honest with one another. 2015, 2016 was a time to imagine a clash with the establishment by progressives. That's why we created DiEM25. In the end, the corrupt radical center of the Troika, of Brussels, of Frankfurt, of Berlin, of Athens, and so on, they won. And the only opposition, real opposition, are the fascists. And the fact that we still exist as a small movement, saying the things we're saying to one another, is a major victory. But we are defeated. Because Europe is defeated. Personally, I don't think we can reform Europe. That's gone. It's a it, it's it's um, pie in the sky now. All we can do is organize orchestrated general resistance against this beast in Brussels, in Frankfurt, in Berlin, and all our capitals. Carpe diem.